Hi everyone, Ryan Ratliff here, Mad River Outfitters guide and fly tying manager. Just want to show you a quick fly. This is a, a guide version of a swinging fly. Uh, we don't have a name for it, so you look at the different colors. Leave a comment down below if you think you got a cool name. We might just adopt that name. All right, cool. Basically what this is going to use, it's going to utilize a few different things. You can look at the ultra rig video on how to utilize this platform and get to this stage in the game. Um, you can prep a lot of these at first so you have them already ready to go also. But let me show you the different materials that we're going to go with. The ultra rig uh, is right here in the, in the platform that comes in a little kit. Dev, you just stole them. Nope, here they are. All right, Dev didn't let you down. Here are the ultra rigs. Come in a kit like this, longer shank, 43 millimeter, 27 millimeter. This is the longer 43 millimeter. Got some ice dub, tried and true. EP brush, it's a tarantula brush, the one inch, and this is in chartreuse. This is also another EP brush. This is the crafter brush. This is the white and chartreuse version. Got some sparkle braid. Some real bright chartreuse extra select craft fur. All three of those together make the white and chartreuse version of this fly. If you want to customize it to different water conditions, um, this one's really good on muddy water. Can work in clear water also. What I like to use in muddy water is this orange and black color. Really, really popular. Really great with that orange extra select craft fur wing. Same materials, just different color. Also for winter, got to have a black fly, black and purple wing here with the craft, EP craft fur brush and a little bit of overtone with that there. So this fly and that buck nasty, the older video of the fly, those are great winter patterns. All right, so you can also mix it up. You want it all white? Go ahead and all white. You want to change out some colors, but utilize these same materials and switch up the colors to the needs that you have for your specific fishery. Great fly, uh, designed for steelhead, needed something quick to fill the box, but still going to be durable. So this is, this is a great option for you. Let's go ahead and get started. Again, I got this ultra rig set up in the, in the vise right here. This is the Regal shank jaw. Excellent for holding these straight pin style shanks. I'm going to take some of this ice dub. Got UTC 140 in white in the bobbin. It's a staple for most streamer patterns. I'm going to take a clump of this. Uh, you know, this is supposed to be a real quick fly. So you, I'm just going to dub it on, but if you want to, you can split thread, dub and loop, do all kinds of different things, but I'm going to speed this up here. I'm going to wet my fingers. Excuse me for that. Just get it dubbed in. Nice and quick. Again, I'm not going to make this real tight body. I want this to be real kind of loose. This is a real fluffy material. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and spin this around. Making a ball right back here in the back. Take off a little bit of extra there, just basically making a tight, real fluffy ball right there. I'm going to fold it back, a couple wraps in just to kind of lock it in. Got a little piece of tarantula brush. It's got a, a metal core, so you want to make sure that you're using appropriate scissor. Going to pull off some of that to expose that core. If it's a little bit too long, get a scissor that's a little more aggressive. You don't want to use your trouty fine scissor for that. Going to tie that in. Being very careful at that cut piece that I don't put tension on the thread over top of that. Lash that in. Now, I'm not just going to wrap this around. I'm going to lay it back. Kind of get all the fibers to go on one side. You can see how it's off both sides here. I'm going to fold that back like that. Okay. I'm going to utilize the bobbin hanger. If you got a rotary vise, it does make it a little bit quicker. It's going to do... There's one full turn, two full turns. See how it's starting to fold around there? Pull that back as I wrap that over. Grab my bobbin, 
my thread, wiggle it through there till I hit that wire. I gotta meet that wire on that material. Wiggle it through, get about three wraps on there. It's all good. Then I like to hold tension. Again, this is a quick way of doing it. I can go in and cut it, but this is a guide fly. So I'm gonna rotate, helicopter that wire around until I feel it pop and then go slow. It's off. Fold that back, wrap nice and tight over top of that so it's, it's good. I'm not trapping too much of the material down, just over top of that little sharp piece of metal there. All right, I'm gonna take my bodkin, pick this out. A little bit easier at this stage in the game to do that. Next, I'm gonna grab one of the EP Crafter brushes. Got the wire exposed right there. Trim it down just a touch. I'm gonna tie that in. Again, being very careful at that wire piece, I don't put too much tension over top of that end until I get it covered up a little bit. All right. Same thing, it's materials coming off of both sides of the, that wire inside there. Gonna try to get it so it's all on one side. Okay, half hitch. Half hitch stops the thread from unraveling. Bobbin holder. Get started here with the rotary. Nice thing about rotary is I can hold tension here. If I, if I wrapped it over, I'd be letting go just for a second or doing hand over hand and I'm not as precise. So having a rotary vise with brushes makes it so much easier because I can stop right where I'm at, starting to get a few going that way, maintain where I'm at and go around. So two or three turns, I don't want it as bushy back here as I do up front. Grab the thread, again, right over top of the wire with the thread. This is the tricky part, you wanna keep tension on that. Again, I'm gonna helicopter this. Just popped off, all good. Fold this back. Over wrap that cutoff piece. And if I have a, a large bump of thread there, I'm gonna just smooth it out a little bit, just so it's gradual tapered down. Looks nice, everything's good. The material is just barely back to the hook shank, that back of that hook shank sticking back there. It's not too short. If your material end up being like this, where it doesn't even, the, just the tips of your material hits the eye, then you got too much, too long of a loop back there. So that's the nice thing about these brushes. You don't have to worry about putting the right length in a loop and doing it yourself. They already come that way, so it's, it's nice. All right, next up, I'm gonna grab some, you can use chartreuse in here. This is the fluorescent yellow. You can use whatever color you really want. Um, you can use white. I like to use white in there sometimes. This kind of depends. Either one of these are good. So, got the white here. Let's just try the white. If the water is a little bit clearer, I'll utilize some white here. Again, a couple little tricks. Speeding up the process, making limiting waste, leaving the material in the package. So, I tie it in, loose wrap over top of that, lash it down half hitch, put the thread on the bobbin holder, and then I'm just gonna wrap this forward. Gets right there, over, wrap over it a couple times, just to lock it down. wrap around like that. All right, it's locked in. Come in, trim it off, boom, done. Now, at this point, make a couple decisions here. I can, if I want some lead eyes in, I can drop lead eyes in right now. This is the best time to add your lead eyes. You'd put them in exactly right here. If I want this to be unweighted, but I wanna utilize enough wing in the front to kind of keel itself and not let it roll 
in there, then I just leave them out. So for this fly, we're gonna go a little bit shallower water. I'm gonna utilize my sink tip and I'm gonna make sure I have a big enough wing to utilize this. So again, if you wanted to add eyes, this is where you would add your, the small to the mini size. I like the plated lead eyes. So I'll have a link for those down below. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna start the whole process again. Pull out some ice dub. It's gonna be a little bit bigger bundle. Ice dub, keep my wing out of the way. Get that all dubbed in, nice and long. I put a lot in here for this one. You always wanna make sure that it's nice and tight, not too scraggly right when you first start out. So, all right. If I did have dumbbell eyes here, I'd be figure eighting these wraps around those dumbbell eyes. But see how large that ball is there. This, that has to be the prop for a lot of material that's gonna go up here on the head. So I'm gonna fold all that back, couple wraps right in front of it to kind of lock it back. Then repeat the process again, grab this tarantula brush, make sure I have some exposed wire. Tie in that wire. Get all the material on one side. Make sure you tie in the wire better than I just did there. Okay, little half hitch. Pull it tight, bobbin, holder. That first one started. As it's starting to push towards the front, I'm gonna pull it back. Get it more on that, that one side. Just do a little bit denser head on this one. Work that thread right into the core on top of that wire. Real important to get that all worked in there. You want to be right on top of that wire. It's not going to cut up, break off when you do this helicopter. Pull some tension on the thread. Helicopter this around with tension. Pop right off. Fold it all back. Get that out of the way. Fold this all back. About three wraps there and a half hitch. If you're starting to crowd the eye here, you're going to have to really watch out because you you got two more materials to put in. So. Kind of have to plan it out a little bit better. Botkin, pick it all out. You have a little, like a dubbing brush, one of those wire brushes, that would work just fine too. Just break it through there. On the tarantula brush, brush once you put it on that craft fur brush, it won't work. It pulls, it grabs it too much. All right, craft fur brush. Got the wire there, tie in at the wire. Be careful not to cut your thread on that tip of that wire. Half hitch, bobbin holder, brush material on the one side. Rotate the brush, keep it nice and tight to itself, each wrap is nice and tight there. One last one, squeeze it in there. All right. Thread work through to hit the core. About three wraps to hold it down is good. Hold tension on your thread, helicopter this around till it pops off. Pull all this back. Kind of over wrap it just a little bit as I'm wrapping back towards my hand and away from the eye, making like a little platform right there. I don't want to go any farther up on the eye. So at this point, I'm just about perfect right there. Pick this out. Got about one or two more wraps in the front than I did in the back. So see how it's a little bit more profile there. All right, I'm gonna grab my extra select craft fur. 
You could put a marabou plume if you wanted to, but I really like how this, uh, the UV and the reflective properties of this, all the different types of things. The stuff that uh, we see, the fluorescentness of this, the stuff that we kind of see, but the fish see a little bit more than we do. So I'm going to select just a little bit there. I'm going to pull that apart off of the faux hide, cut it right down next to it. Set this aside. Now I have this bit right here. This is the under fur. I don't need this much under fur, so I'm going to pull a lot of that out. Don't really need this. And then I have a few that are really, really long. Those would be your guard hairs that are really, really long. I want to size it up. It's going right about to the tip of that fly where the hook is there. Maybe just a few a pass there. Maybe those extra long ones I'll pull out and restack them in. Yep. I want that wing to go right back to about where that hook is. So I'm going to trim this flush. Again, I've worked my thread back just a little bit. So I have a nice little platform of thread. Two loose wraps just around the craft fur. Cinch it down. Take a peek, make sure I'm not crowding my eye. I'm still on that platform of thread. Two more just to lock it down. I was right where I wanted it to be. Everything looks good right there. So now I'm going to trim up this head. If I was in a really, really big hurry, I would just heat up my bodkin, come in, just kind of melt some of that off. Pull out your little fine tip trout, trouty scissor too. Get all that taken care of. Be careful not to cut your thread here. All right, so I'm going to fold this back, over wrap on top of that to pull that back off of that eye. Decent profile. This would be your bodkin technique. Heat this up till it's starting to glow a little bit red. Come in, melt that stuff away from the eye. This was going to be a fly that maybe I was giving away or I was selling or something like that, then I would take a little bit more time. Again, this is a guide fly. Hand, whip finish, three turn. Pull it back till it locks, you feel it lock in. Make a V with my scissor, push the V onto the thread. It's cut like that. One last thing for durability. Going to fluff this up just a touch. Turn it so you can kind of see. I want this to be pretty even across the board. Wing on top. Everything's all set. Going to pull out the Flex, Solarez Flex. Still awake, Dave? Okay. Squeeze it until I start to see it come out. I'm just going to take a little bit on my bodkin. A little bit more precise this way. Then I'm just going to paint this over top of the head. Trying to get just the material right closest to my thread. And I'm getting a little bit on the thread head too. Grab your light. Hit this. You're going to see how bright this fly is too. All right, can't see anything because it's so bright, but all right. What that did, 
not only did it keep the angle of this fly, but it gives it some rigidity. So it's always going to hold it at that, that kind of cone all the way around. As the water hits it, it's going to hold in that profile, it's going to sweep back. So the benefit there. Again, this is a guide fly. The head isn't perfect. Doesn't matter. It's a guide fly. Something that I need to fill a box with and be all ready to go. Pop it out of the hook or the hook out of the, the shank out of the vise there. Now this is where you got this little piece of exposed shank. The junction tubing. Going to pull the junction tubing back on that braid. Stick the tube, the shank into the junction tubing. Pull it back down so it's tight. Utilize that shank, that junction tubing to hold the shank of the hook in the right profile that you want. So, perfect there. Nice long wing going right to the right spot. Everything swept back. I want to hook up, twist it around, write it hook up if I want. Crazy. So, real quick swinging pattern. I know I talked about each step, but when you put it in the vise and go from start to beginning, start to finish, then it's perfect. It does real quick, very, very durable. That's the key with this, and it moves really good. So, got a name for this fly? Go ahead and leave a comment down below. We'll see what we come up with. So, utilizes brushes, utilizes the ultra rig, uh, very effective, um, and it's been treating me really well this fall season. So thanks for joining us. Uh, make sure you leave a comment with a name for the fly or if you have, uh, if you have any success with, with this pattern, leave us, send us a picture or leave us a comment there. Uh, thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page. Thanks. Bye. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.